Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to my channel. I'm Mike and this is Manitoba Outdoors. So today I'm gonna to talk about clothing for deer hunting. And this is what I wear and specifically it's for general rifle season in Manitoba, which starts November the 14th this year, I believe. Um, archery starts earlier. There's a season for muzzleloader. Um, at the end of rifle season, there's shotgun muzzle loading options in certain areas as well too, which um, this is the same clothing I would wear since it's getting into the cooler temps. So um, archery, I haven't gone for 20 years, 25 years. Uh, I think it takes a lot more time to get into. Um, the clothing is very different. Uh, you're wearing camouflage, you're blending in, you're in tree stands, hunting blinds, things like that. So totally different. So I'm not gonna cover clothing um, for that, but just quickly, I wanted to show you, this was the last buck I got, which was archery. So look at this beautiful rack. So this was a big boy. It was monstrous. I remember, uh, pulling him through the snow, big boy. You put in the time and effort. This is what it leads to. So don't always get something every season. I've had plenty of opportunities, but you wait for that, that perfect opportunity. And if it doesn't feel right, then um, I have no problem passing on a deer and waiting for next year. It's just fun getting out. Okay, so let's get into it. A base layer is something that's going to wick away and keep the moisture off your skin. Um, it's fast drying, so you want to avoid cotton. So uh, the base layers I wear almost all year round, depending on the setting, because they're so versatile. And the point is just to keep the moisture off you and keep you dry. So for the past several years, I've been wearing these under Armour's uh, compression jogging pants. I call them tights, they're my man tights. So tight fitting, uh, it's 100% uh, polyester. It's their cold gear line. This has worked really well, um, highly recommend that. This year I also bought a pair of these Wool Love 100% Merino wool base layer um, leggings. So. These have worked well, use these camping, but highly recommend just having that base layer. will give a little warmth, but the main purpose is to wick away moisture. Now, sometimes I might even wear, even traditional long drawns are fine over top of the base layers um, if it's really cold. Next, I use this Icebreaker t-shirt. I've had this probably for, I don't know if you can see this. I've had this for easily 10 years. It's tight fitting but it does a great job of keeping moisture away. Um, and it's really thin and when it's tight too, it's like you're wearing nothing. So and that's how I treat my base layers. It's just, I don't count it as clothing. Um, so I'll put that on. Now I'll put a long sleeve, another base layer, I call it, um, over top. This is a Heli Hansen. It's a blend, merino wool, polyester blend. And I'll put that over. So. Most of the time, that's enough. Like it's it's pretty warm um, as far as the base layers go. Um, now the the uh, pants of these Cabello's cargo pants. I've worn these for years. I've had them forever, um, so they still fit. I bought them big, and then they were getting tight on me last year. But then I dropped about forty pounds, so now they fit again. So that goes over top. So on the pants. If it's really cold, I'll have a tight fitting that merino wool or those Under Armour tights underneath. Put a pair of long johns as the mid layer, and this is the exterior layer. Most of the time, that's that's enough. That works well. On top, I'll put, if it's really cold, I might put a, a quarter zip uh, sweater like this. It's very thin. Again, it's polyester over top of the merino wool um, short sleeve and the long sleeve or something like this. I'll put a fleece, which is a little uh, heavier. This is a Columbia fleece, which has a little kind of turtleneck there. So either of those I'll put on if it's really cold. Now for socks, I wear this thin layer. These are synthetic socks. It's not merino wool, but it's, it's supposed to do the same job. Um, it almost feels like dress socks for dress pants, like a suit. Um, they're very thin, but they keep um, the moisture away. And then I'll wear a pair of wool socks over top. So these are Wool Love 
Again, just pick these up this year. Uh, merino wool socks. These are a little thicker. They almost feel like cotton thox socks. Um, they're thick like that, or you can just wear another pair of your traditional wool socks. Again, keep those feet, especially your toes. You wear cotton and you're hiking, you start to sweat. Um, that moisture is gonna soak in and uh, you're gonna get cold toes. Now, if it's really cold out, um, and sometimes in Manitoba, it's middle of a blizzard, and it's minus 20 or even lower, um, I'll put on a pair of bibs. So these are tough duck bibs. They zip on like this, really nice. Um, these are extra large. So on the exterior wear, the outer wear, I do wear them bigger just to give myself room. Um, even when it's not too cold, sometimes these are nice because you can kneel on the ground, not worry about getting wet. Um, they're easy to get in and out of um, and they're comfortable. So now for the jacket, I do have this Remington jacket. This, uh, it's two layers. So this actually zips off and there's an exterior shell. So I primarily just use it like this. Super warm. This is an extra large as well. Uh, it's got lots of pockets here everywhere so pockets are good they're nice and deep um, it does come with a hood if i want to attach that as well um, most of the time this is so warm that just my base layer the t-shirt with the long sleeve top is more than enough okay moving on my head i'll wear a toque or you got this hat here which i could also do this if it's really sunny out uh, make sure you got a a hat with your baseball style hat um, because the sun, especially the sunrise and sun setting, depending which way you're facing or just with the snow and it's super bright, um, it can be really hard to see when you're just wearing a toque. So carry a hat with me. Now for those windy days, I keep a really thin balaclava like this, um, or this year, where is it? I did pick up this, this neck warmer as well. It's a real tree. I just wore it on my camping trip because it was a little cooler, but it does pull up. So I might try wearing this. It has little holes for ventilation. That's all you need to cut down that wind. Um, and I like it thin because usually when I'm hunting, for me, I don't put the toque over my ears. I just, I like to hear my surroundings and I find this muffles it unless it's really windy and I have to, um, but something thin like this over top. I do really like. I do have a fleece, one that's a little thicker. There's a little smaller opening here. Um, if it's really cold, I can put that. So got some options there. Gloves, I pretty much wear these guys. Um, these are hot shot. Um, they have a Gore-Tex liner, I guess a wind blocker in here. They seem to work pretty well, especially when you're hiking. So we got the trigger, trigger finger there. So it's easy to slip in. I do have some gloves, but they're bigger and I can't get them in the, they get blocked in the trigger guard, which makes it hard. Um, now my fingers do tend to get cold. So if you're standing still for a couple hours um, in one spot, they can get cold. Um, but I always like to be ready. Um, so I keep these on. So I either put uh, those hand warmers in the palm and on the back inside the glove and keep them on. I get used to pull back my fingers and hold on to a hand warmer in here, just like this. Um, but I like being ready because it's usually uh, when you're not ready. So if I got these off and I got them in a pocket for warming my hands uh, and something walks out in front, I just like to be ready. It's that extra movement that comes out. So. For me, I just prefer to always have my hand on the gun. If it gets really cold, I'll, I'll maybe push it in a pocket just to warm it up. Um, but otherwise, I like these gloves. So this is one area I might look at uh, investing in a better pair of gloves, um, just as something that adds a little bit more warmth. Footwear. So I got two options. So these are Under Armour hiking boots. Um, I really like these. Uh, they're 400 gram. This is the insulation. 
if I remember correctly, these are about minus 20. I didn't want to go uh, any uh, lower than that. I wanted a little bit warmer on the warmer side because when you're hiking, uh, if it's too warm, you're going to sweat like crazy. So these are pretty warm. Um, they're waterproof, which is good. I just took them on my canoe trip a couple weeks ago and uh, I had water right up to the ankles and no issues there. So these weren't designed to go in water. I don't think like that. They're more designed for cold weather and snow, um, but they didn't leak at all. So good option. The only thing I don't like about them, this aggressive tread um, in certain conditions and when the snow's crunchy, these are super loud. It's really hard to walk quietly. So my other option, which I tend to use more often now is these rubber boots. These are Kamek insulated rubber boots. I don't know if you can see, they have a liner in here, which is good to take out so you can dry them. Um, I think these are rated for minus 40 or 50 or something like that. And they're really quiet when you're, when you're walking through the bush. Um, and they keep your legs extra warm as well. So these are really nice. Now don't let the ratings fool you. Um, if it says minus 50, you're like, I'm good. I'm not going to get cold. doesn't work that way. If you're standing still for two hours, when you get in there, you know, two hours or an hour before sunrise and you're standing there, um, or on a, on a snowy, blizzardy, windy day, and you're standing there for a couple hours, um, you will get cold. It doesn't matter how thick your, how high your rating is on your boots. Um, you stand there long enough, you're going to start to get cold. So. Um, that's why it's good if you're hiking there's no issues but standing still you get cold so those toe warmers any kind of foot warmers are, are a good idea if you think you're gonna be standing around a lot now not really clothing related but it is and sort of related I've had various kind of bags this is the ones I've changed up this is from Cabela's it's just a waist pack I had one that had the shoulder straps as well which worked really good um, but what I like about this is it actually cinches tighter around your waist and it keeps the wind and the draft from going up your back. So sometimes when it's windy, uh, you're getting that draft that's going up. Not so much if you're wearing bibs, um, but if you're just wearing your pants and you have your jacket, um, sometimes that snow and wind just blows up your back. This keeps everything nice and tight. Not only that is, this is where you could add your fuel to keep the, the furnace going, uh, so to speak, during the day. So if you got sandwiches, um, hunting's always after Halloween, so uh, you have candies in here, water. I also keep the knife, some rope, um, rubber gloves, things that I'll need to, if I, if I get something and I start to feel dress the deer, um, I have most of what I need in the bag. Also, maybe um, some survival items in case I get lost. I usually keep carrying my GPS. Um, but having lighters, some basic things to start a fire is not a bad idea. An emergency blanket uh, doesn't take much room. Um, but I like doing that and plus carrying extra ammo in here versus too much in my jacket. So um, recommend getting something like that around your way. Now, just a general note. Um, on staying warm while you're hunting is don't get too hot on the drive up going hunting. So it's a trick I learned when I was doing construction and we'd take a break and go into the trailer when it's like minus 40 out. Um, the guys would be taking off their boots, taking off their jacket, opening things up. Um, and that's what they told me to do because they said, you don't want to warm up. You don't want to sweat. Um, you want everything to breathe. And uh, it might be uncomfortable when it's cold out, but that's definitely the right way to go. So in the morning when I'm heading out, I don't have my jacket on. I don't have my bibs. Um, I might not even have one of these on or my toque or anything like that. I definitely won't be wearing my boots at all in the ride up. Um, it might feel cold getting changed and when you're getting up in the morning, but that's way better. You're better off starting cold and then warming up as you walk in to the bush and find your spot or when you're hiking. Um, you get too warm sitting in the car and you get a little bit of sweat going, even if you have, you know, the good base layers and wool. Um, as soon as you get in the cold and post up, 
if you have that dampness, it's just one thing that might create that chill um, in you. So it's always better start as cold as you can, get changed and you'll warm up that way um, is always the better option. And uh, throughout the day when you're hiking, if it's too warm, you could always take layers off, take some breaks um, and you can add and remove layers as you go on throughout the day. So those are some tips. Uh, hope you found this helpful. Um, if there's any questions, comments, you have any other ideas, um, I'm always open to new things, always learning. I don't have all the answers. Uh, this is what has worked for me. And like I said, other than the gloves, um, I need to do something about that. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're going out hunting, if it's your first time or you go out every year, good luck this year. Uh, be safe out there. You're wearing blaze orange for a reason. You want to be seen. Uh, I could wear a vest, which is a little less orange and more camo underneath uh, to break it myself up. I mean, deer can't see this orange, but they can see a dark, like a solid color like that, which will stand out. Um, so in the future, may do something like that too. Have some more camo and wear a vest. Um, sometimes I carry a, a deer blind that I can open up with camo, but some of the areas where I hunt, it gets busy and I don't want to be hiding behind camo. <laughs> when uh, someone's standing across the field that might not see me and start shooting at a deer. So safety first, it's just not worth it. Uh, not worth it to get out there and risk getting shot. Um, unless you really know the area, um, even then you just gotta be careful. So good luck out there, be safe and uh, enjoy the hunting season. <laughs>